Welcome to Approach to ABGs Part 14, the Delta Delta. We're going to define what the Delta Delta is and how to identify multiple metabolic processes in the arterial blood gas. A delta is a difference between two values and usually we're talking about a change from normal. So if I told you the PCO2 was 30, normal is 40, this would represent a delta of 10. And so we've used those deltas to try to figure out compensation, is it full or partial? And there's another delta ratio that is very diagnostically important for ABG analysis. And this is a delta bicarb versus the delta anion gap. So this is called the delta delta, the delta gap, or the delta ratio, and we're going to walk through why this exists and why it's important. So a review from previous podcasts, when you have a anion gap, metabolic acidosis, we have a new acid, it dissociates, the hydrogen ion concentration is the primary event, it goes up, the equation will shift to the right and bicarb is consumed and reduced. And so we have this concept now where we have this new acid introduced. It's an anion because it has a negative charge. And with this equation, the bicarb goes down and it's the only thing that goes down and the anion gap goes up. What's important here is that there is a one-to-one -one relationship between the change in the bicarb and the change in the anion gap. If the bicarb goes down by one, the anion gap goes up by one. So we expect that when there's a certain value change in the anion gap, we can predict what the change in the bicarb was. So if you only had an anion gap metabolic acidosis, you could look at the bicarb and the anion gap and predict or expect that there's a one-to-one -one relationship. Or in other words, you could look at the change in the anion gap and you could predict what the change in the bicarb, bicarb was. And reiteration from a really important rule from previous podcasts, if the anion gap is increased, there is always a metabolic acidosis and specifically it is an anion gap metabolic acidosis. So we're going to go through a couple examples of how to use the anion gap to predict the bicarb. If I told you that the anion gap is 17, what should the bicarb be? Well, the anion gap is increased from 12 to 7, which is a delta of 5. So we would predict a delta of 5 for the bicarb. And so from 24 down to 19 is what we would expect the bicarb to be. So we have a delta of 5 for the anion gap, a delta of 5 for the bicarb, and our delta delta would be 0. So this occurs when there's only one process happening, which is an anion gap metabolic acidosis. Can you have multiple metabolic processes happening at the same time? Yes, you can. You could have an anion gap and non-anion gap metabolic acidosis, two different processes happening at the same time. You could have a metabolic acidosis with a metabolic alkalosis, and that could be with anion gap or non-anion gap. So these are the three different options, the three different combinations, and we're going to look at how to recognize or identify when this is happening. So let's use the anion gap again to predict the bicarb. I'm going to tell you the anion gap is 20, so you're going to say, all right, the delta anion gap is 8. The bicarb predicted should also have a delta of 8. 
which would make the bicarb predicted to be 16. But what if the bicarb was actually 21? How would we explain that the bicarb was higher than predicted? And if you thought about it for a moment, you would realize a higher bicarb is more alkalotic than expected. So there should be, or rather you can actually say there is an additional metabolic alkalosis process happening. If we calculate the delta delta, we would see that the anion gap has a delta of eight. The bicarb only has a delta of three, even though we expected it would have a delta of eight. And so the delta delta, they're not the same. It's not zero. It's a positive value. It's five. Let's look at what it means when the bicarb is higher than expected. It means you have an anion gap metabolic acidosis and a metabolic alkalosis. This is a mixed disorder and there are two primary metabolic osis processes happening. Another example, anion gap of 20. So you would expect the bicarb, same as last time, to be 16, but what if the bicarb was 11? The bicarb is more acidotic than we expected, so there must be a second metabolic acidosis process happening. We've got a delta of 8 for the anion gap, but here we have a delta of 13 for the bicarb, so we have a negative value. And so our bicarb is lower than expected. We already know for sure we have an anion gap metabolic acidosis because we have an anion gap. And we must also have a non-anion gap metabolic acidosis. Again, this is a mixed disorder. These are two different primary metabolic processes. Of the third option here, what would it look like if you had a non-anion gap metabolic acidosis and a metabolic alkalosis? The answer is no change to the anion gap because neither of these processes impact the anion gap. And so you can actually never know if these two processes coexist. It's Possible they do, it's just invisible to us because they literally balance each other out or cancel each other out and they don't leave any little footprint in the sand like the anion gap. So this can happen, we just don't know when this third option happens. All right, let's do a sneaky, tri uh, sneaky tricky ABG example here. 740, PCO2 of 40, bicarb of 24. This is a perfectly normal ABG. The question is, can we stop here? And the answer is no. What if I told you for this ABG, the anion gap was 20? Well, this is an increase of eight. We would expect the bicarb to be down eight points, down to 16 but it's not, it's actually higher than expected. So this is an example where you could have a completely normal ABG, but if the anion gap was abnormal, you would have to diagnose a primary AGMA, anion gap metabolic acidosis, plus a metabolic alkalosis. So your assessment of an ABG is never completed until you perform a calculation of the anion gap. So at first glance, it looks like this is a completely normal ABG with no, no metabolic disturbance and no respiratory disturbance, but you can't be confident until you calculate the anion gap.